Hello summoners and welcome back to another pro guides video. My name is Trey and today we'll be discussing counter picks to common OP champions you see daily in League. We'll be going over specific runes, builds, and even playstyles on how to effectively win on specific matchups. So the next time you see someone lock in these champs, you'll have all the right tools and game knowledge to completely dominate that matchup. Also I wanted to mention to you guys, we're doing a giveaway which includes 7 pro subscriptions for one year at ProGuides.com and 10 winners will also receive 2000 PG points to redeem for coaching. All you need to do to enter is subscribe to our YouTube channel and join our Discord below and navigate to the giveaway tab for further information. Now for our question of the day, what champion do you always ban in ranked? I personally ban Blitzcrank because of his pressure in lane and dodging his hooks can sometimes be a massive pain. Let us know in the comments who you avoid playing against. And lastly, before we get started, make sure to join our Discord and check out ProGuides.com. There we have courses from your favorite pro players like Doublelift and many challenger level coaches who can take your gameplay to the next level. We also have daily live classes from top tier instructors like Zyrene and Mike Young. Don't miss out on these great opportunities to improve and join the community. With that being said, let's jump straight into the video. Garen is one of those champions dominating top lane right now because of his simple all-in playstyle. It can be really frustrating for players to deal with him because he's so tanky and does so much damage. In order to shut down the might of Demacia, we're going with the Missing Link also known as Gnar. This little monster has the ability to avoid Garen and once enraged, can toss him around with the crowd control of a machine. Your ranged harass forces Garen to eventually want to engage and when he does, he will use his decisive strike at which point you will throw your boomerang and kite back. If Garen continues to commit, you will use your jump to disengage further. From here, you will kite forward or continue to kite backwards if he decides to run away. If you are in mega form, you will want to stun him with W followed by your boulder and look to kite away because you will not beat Garen in a long duration fight. For your build, you're going to want to go to Black Cleaver for the movement speed, Merc Treads or Tab Eye, Frozen Mallet to slow Garen down, and Death Stance. After that, you can look to build Tanky to match the situation for the game. An important note on the matchup, and for Gnar specifically, is to distinguish between short jumping and long jumping. Many champions will disengage the second they see Gnar jumping away, so you want to take advantage of this by short jumping to bait the enemy into running away, but immediately turning on them to continue fighting. Just keep in mind, your overall goal is to keep poking Garen to gain a CS lead and leave laning phase with a big advantage. Our next counter pick in the top lane is going to be Pantheon against Wukong. Your ability to negate his damage and duel him will send him back to the fountain soon enough. When Wukong engages, he will lead with his E, followed by his crushing blow. At which point you will negate all this damage with your shield, ability, Aegis, Assault. From here the rest is history because Wukong ultimately has no abilities left allowing for you to chase him with your stun followed by your spear. You want to use your ability to negate his damage to control the lane and zone him from being able to walk up and farm. Eventually you will gain a lead which will give you opportunities to engage where you will want to open up with your stun and immediately Q. From here you can kite forwards or backwards with your shield and win out the fight. For your build, you will want to go Corrupting Potion, Black Cleaver, Tabai, Yomu's, Death Dance, followed by Edge of Night. These items will give you more tools to chase down Wukong when he tries to run away. Pantheon will have an easy time in this matchup when played correctly, so use these tips to stay ahead. Make sure you do manage your mortal will stacks with what ability you want to use on Wukong, usually your Q or W if you want to stack Conquer faster. Lastly, whenever you go in for a stun on Wukong, pay attention to the white silhouette you get when he's invisible. This will line up for you to land your melee range Q to output more damage on him. The jungle position has been taking over rank recently, and there are a couple champions that have been dominating. Both Volibear and Fiddlesticks have been boasting high win rates and low counterplay all across the board, so we have a couple of niche picks to beat out these junglers running rampant. Huge disclaimer for jungle, jungle is all about lane priority. This assumes both junglers are inside a vacuum fighting each other. While Volibear excels in hunting people down and staying alive in fights with his beefiness, he struggles to deal with champions with sustain and crowd control. The counter we are presenting here will be Kane. Assuming you are Red Kane, when Volibear runs at you, the trade pattern will always look the same. You start out by using your W, Blade's Reach, to knock him up and stall out his Q stun. From here, you can look to fight him and look to use your ultimate, Umbral Trespass, to dodge his ultimate, ultimately resulting in a winning fight. For your build, you want to run Blue Spite Warrior, Tab Eye or Merc Treads, Black Cleaver, Death Stance, and Spear Visage for all the sustain in the world. 
Kane is a jungler with extremely high carry potential, so here are some tips to make sure you know what you're doing. Try to avoid Volibear early on, and look to stack up your form by ganking melee characters. If you have no choice but to engage Volibear, use your abilities to trade with him and disengage with your Shadow Step to run away or stall for time for your teammates to come. Keep an eye out for easy knockups on Volibear since his engagement is very one-dimensional as he tries to just run at you. When dealing with Fiddlesticks, you want a champ that will put fear into him by hunting him down with the help of invisibility. Evelyn may have a weak early game, but once you reach level 6 and unlock your stealth, you can hunt down just anybody. If Fiddlesticks ever engages on you while you are playing Evelyn, then you either fell very behind or made a mistake in positioning. Your best bet is to ult away and find a new opportunity later down the line. Ideally, you want to be the one starting the fight by finding him first hiding in the shadows, looking for a crowstorm play. Open up with your charm on Fiddlesticks and wait for it to charge. From here, land your Q and immediately use all your abilities along with Blue Smite and Ultimate to finish the poor Scarecrow off. Your build will always include Runic Echoes, Sork Shoes, Magi's, Lich Bane, Rabidons, followed up with Leandries. Once you reach 2-3 items, hunting down Fiddlesticks will be easy. Here are some tips to stay on the hunt. Your goal here is to reach level 6 and purchase Runic Echoes, eventually leading into a Magi's. From here, your goal is to hunt down squishy targets along with Fiddlesticks to get free stacks to snowball the game. Make sure you focus on finding Fiddlesticks during objective dances so you can finish him off before he gets a chance to surprise your team. Lastly, don't forget to turn up the hype dubstep to get into the zone when piloting Evelyn. I make sure I don't forget. And for countering Galio and Cassidyn, Galio has some of the strongest wave clear and survivability of any mid laner in the game. The best way to bully him is by shutting down his playstyle and destroying him in the split push. Fiora accomplishes this with ease. Any time from level 2 and onwards, if Galio ever tries to engage Fiora, look to use parry to stop his crowd control and stun him back. From here, look to continue breaking vitals on him and decide when you cannot chase him any further. Starting off with a Corruption Potion, go for Ravenous Hydra Rush, Merc Treads, build into Trinity Force, pick up Death Stance, and finish off with Maul and Mercurial Skimtar. This lane is straightforward once you have the basic sound, so here's a couple of tips. An advanced way to play Fiora is a move called Tipping the Lunge. This means basically using your Q to proc a vital but landing it at its furthest possible range. This will help you keep spacing between you and your opponent allowing you to disengage with the extra movement speed. Pay attention to how Galio reacts when you play aggressively. If he tends to immediately taunt or try to hold his abilities to bait out your parry, adapt and play accordingly to win the mind game. But let's say mind games aren't your thing. Make sure you run Cleanse and build Mercurial Skimtar as your final item to give you all the tools you need to escape his crowd control and finish him off. The purpose of this pick is to shut down Galio eventually bringing the matchup to the side lane, where you will look to pressure towers with your trinity force and demolish, forcing the enemy team to send multiple people to deal with your threat. Cassidy is tough to deal with because he will eventually reach his late game spike, allowing him to carry the game. So taking Talon mid and dominating all lanes will ensure that doesn't happen. Due to Cassidy's weak early game, he will never look to engage you, giving you free reign on how you want to control the lane and when you want to trade. Anytime he tries to walk up to farm, you can look to engage with him with your W, Rake, and follow it up with your Noxian Diplomacy, allowing you to break your passive for tons of damage. Always start lane with a longsword and rush into Tiamat. From here purchase Yomus, Merc Treads, Dustblade, then build what you like to adapt to the game. The reason why you rush Tiamat here is due to the simple fact that Passin will never walk up and trade with you. This gives you the opportunity to simply push out the wave with your W and Tiamat, and then roam to side lanes. Just remember Kassin may eventually reach his late game power spike at level 16, so look to get all your teammates ahead and end the game before 30 minutes. Countering Vayne and Caitlyn, similar to the jungle, there is a huge disclaimer. ADCs will never run at each other and fight in a 1v1. The point of these counter picks is to find opportunities to win small trades and build up advantages, eventually leading to an outscale opportunity. A lot of ADC matchups are heavily influenced by supports, since supports dictate the pace of the bottom lane. Vayne, like many other ADCs, wants to look to scale and reach her insane late game power spike. Why not pick a character who shares the same goals but also punishes her early on with Twitch? Anytime Vayne moves up, look to trade with Vayne with Hail of Blades and follow up with E Contaminate. With the Plague Rat, look to build Blade of the Ruined King, Berserker Greaves, Runans, Infinity Edge, followed up with the Phantom Dancer. Here are a few notes to this lane. The point of this lane is to outscale Vayne while still pressuring her during the early laning phase. Feel free to shake hands with Vayne and look to freely farm alongside Vayne. However, if she ever tries to play aggressively, drop your Venom Cask and trade back with Hail Blades followed by Contaminate. While Twitch may be a little outdated, just make sure you flex on Vayne with your assassinate abilities in your invisibility and crazy teamfighting with massive range. 
Lastly, again, you're going to want to pull out that dubstep and attain that free LP. The annoying long range ADC we all know as Kaylin can be countered by Jinx. All you need to do is maintain your farm with your minigun and trade auto attacks with your long range gun if Kaylin decides to trade. Be very mindful of your mana's usage early game and focus on farming to outscale Kaylin. The main point of the Jinx pick is to be able to match Kaylin's harass and outscale her once you reach your power spike. Your build here should start with Infinity Edge, Berserker Greaves, Runans, and Phantom Dancer, and from here you can build according to the game. Two quick points on this one, focus on using your long range gun along with Runan's Hurricane to output massive DPS in teamfights to get your movement from your passive. From here, you can laugh along with Jinx as you clean up the enemy team. Lastly, don't forget the most important tidbit of information is that you get one bonus gold for taking down Kaelin or Vi. So spend that very wisely to reach that late game hyperscaling mode. In countering Lulu and everybody's favorite wandering caretaker, Bard, these counters don't imply you will be dueling 1v1 in the bottom lane. Instead, it's about the small things during the laning phase to get the upper hand for priority. To beat the Fae Sorceress, you're going to need to pick the Star Child Soraka. Soraka will poke out Lulu and out sustain her, resulting in an advantage for your ADC. Look to control the middle brush in the bot lane and avoid getting in the range of Lulu's E. From here, look to poke her and find a health advantage in the laning phase. You'll want to buy Spell Thieves Edge, Boots of Mobility, Ardent Sensor, and Athenes. Round out your build with items like Redemption or Mikhail's Crucible and don't forget to purchase Control Wards. Soraka is considered easy to play, but here's some tips to help you dominate the game. After level 6, if you notice Lulu plans on using her ultimate soon to save someone, you can choose to silence her to prevent her from ulting, which will create a very advantageous position for you. Once you reach team fights, focus on your positioning and keep your teammates alive while Lulu can only focus on one person. Lastly, if all else fails, just keep in mind that you will outscale Lulu in the late game with all your healing. Thresh vs Bard Your goal here is to create a zone of influence to make Bard fear of walking up to get hooked. Look to control the middle brush and hook opponents if they ever disrespect your range to find a summoner's advantage. For Thresh, look to build Relic Shield, Boots of Mobility, Zeke's Convergence, and Knight's Vow. From here, you can purchase Stone Plate to be tankier and stay alive in fights. Make sure to keep a slot for control wards as they are important later down the game. Here are a couple notes to help you pilot the Chain Warden. Try to control the lane so you hit level 2 first off the 9th minion in the bottom lane. From here as you hit level 2, move up flash in and flay your opponent and follow up with a hook to secure a kill. This will give you the advantage you need to control the lane and outroom bard during the mid game. And with that, that concludes our latest episode of Counter Picks. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to join our Discord below where we do ton of coaching giveaways and community events. Lastly, don't forget to visit our website at proguys.com where you can receive coaching from pro players, watch live classes, and improve with courses from pro players. Don't forget to leave a like and comment, and hey, even subscribe! And again, I do want to mention for the last time, we are doing a giveaway which includes 7 pro subscriptions for one year at proguides.com and 10 winners will receive 2000 PG points to redeem for high quality coaching. All you need to do is subscribe to our YouTube channel and join our Discord below and navigate to the giveaway tab for further information. Again, my name is Trey and thank you so so much for watching and good luck to everyone on the Rift. Have a good one folks.